One of my favorite parts of the Ignatian family teaching is hearing from my peers and how their passions have driven them to touch the lives of others. We have been blessed with 10 individuals from all around our nation here to spread their message of hope with us. Ignatian family, please join me in welcoming the first of these spectacular individuals, Jaime Garcia from Fordham University. Well, uh, um, so my name is not Jaime Garcia, I'm Jaime Rodriguez, so mom, I didn't have a name change, but, um, but good evening, Ignatian family. Uh, I'm very grateful to be able to speak with you today, and I want to thank the ISN for giving me an opportunity for me to speak, and I want to give a special shout out to those who have helped me get here, especially Fordham University, and... <laughs> and my high school alma mater, Fairfield College Preparatory School. What up? <laughs> so first, I want to preface my speech with this, um, what it is not going to be about. It will not be about charity or about a trip to a foreign country where students are unaware of the intricacies of poverty and race. No one can doubt that the intentions of service trips and charity are good, but we, are also, but we also have to acknowledge the harmful impact that is done when we work for justice without a social and systemic analysis. It gets away from the why, and the why can be just as difficult or even more difficult to answer than the how. A dozen people can come together so quickly to tackle the questions of how can we help or how can we serve, but the moment you ask the question, why are people poor? or why are our systems inequitable, those people seem to disappear. All you hear is silence because those questions force us to confront power, which is innately difficult for us to talk about. And that is what this speech is about, how through my experiences at Fordham University's Dorothy Day Center for Service and Justice has made me confident as a person of color to not stay silent on the isms that have affected my entire life and have affected yours as well. If we are to work for justice, we have to frame our justice through social analysis. We have to ask and struggle with the difficult questions because we cannot even begin to talk about the oppressed if we don't talk about the oppressors. Doing so illuminates the dignity of all humanity. My experiences at my Jesuit high school were different from the typical students found at Jesuit institutions. I am not white, and I didn't come from a considerably wealthy or even middle-class family. I came from the economically stagnant and crime-ridden inner city of Bridgeport, Connecticut that borders the quiet and wealthy suburbs of Fairfield where my high school was located. I came from an elementary, elementary school where kids looked like me, they talked like me, they dressed like me, and had family struggles like my own. Fairfield Prep was a different world, and although I excelled academically to the best of my abilities, I had to work harder to make sure that my white peers didn't see me as inferior, because that's how I felt all the time. I wrestled with questions like, why am I the only student of color in AP classes? Or why is it that by senior year, only there were, during my freshman year, there were a substantial number of students of color in my class, but, during, by, but by senior year, only about a dozen received a diploma. Why didn't anyone care about the economic inequality that was so clear to me between my city of Bridgeport and the town of Fairfield? I didn't know how to express what I was going through. I didn't have the language or the analysis to articulate what I had internalized about my race. I thought that maybe I was just crazy, that maybe this inkling that there was something larger at play, something but that there was something larger at play, something systemic was, that was in my head. When I came to Fordham, I immediately became involved in the Dorothy Day Center for Service and Justice, my university service-based center. And that is where everything clicked for me, that those once crazy thoughts of something larger at play were real, and that there was a language to talk about and a lens from which to work for social justice. Through trainings in the Dorothy Day Center's Social Justice Leader Program, I gained a systemic analysis of, of oppression, that the inequalities I experienced growing up were not only based on individual choices, but were a result of institutionalized racism within this country's systems of employment, education, housing, and criminal justice. Oppression of various forms. 
particularly racial oppression, is historically rooted in those systems, constructed and reconstructed in order to maintain power in the hands of a few in this country, excluding the majority of people of color and poor people. We have to acknowledge that racism still exists today and that people who come from marginalized and poor communities and communities of color who have had a history of being oppressed and are disproportionately disadvantaged. They continue to not have access to essential resources that recognize their full humanity. And how has this anal analysis informed the work that I do? When my city of New York was hit by Hurricane Sandy, my colleague and I, Chris Hennessy, organized a series of relief programs in some of the most impacted communities. While our university was closed for an entire week, we mobilized the student-run Fordham College at Lincoln Center Hurricane Sandy response on the Upper West Side and Hell's Kitchen, sending out teams of students with supplies to neighborhoods as close as Chinatown on the Lower East Side to as far as Red Hook in Brooklyn. Before we went out, honest, however, we were in communication with the communities themselves, allowing those most affected to voice their needs in areas of support that they were requesting. How could we enter a relationship with these communities that, that acknowledge their voice in our position of privilege? How could we ensure that that communication was mindful of this power, power dynamic and also ensuring accountability and sustainability so we didn't leave once we, were thought, once we thought the job was done, but rather to see this relationship as a long-term one. With students that were going into the communities, we were also intentional, intentional with the way in which we prepare students to acknowledge their privilege and understand the communities with which they were serving. What did you see? Who was affected? Why did the inequalities exist? As an Indonesian family, we have to challenge ourselves with these questions. How do we, as Jesuit institutions, prepare students to go out and serve alongside and learn from vulnerable and marginalized communities? How do we support students in understanding the systemic nature of inequality we see in our world? How do we acknowledge the power dynamic between our institutions and the communities within which we serve? And how do we ensure that our work is not for our own benefit, but is supporting long-term relationships that build up our, all of our humanity? Our Jesuit institutions have invited us to be women and men for and with others. In response to the injustices we see in our world, we have also been invited to question our role within this arrangement of inequality and to be critical lovers of our world, our professions, our institutions. We need to be bothered in order to work for justice, because if not, what is the point? We need, I have experienced and felt the authenticity and the realness of relationships and social justice work when we have dialogues around racism, sexism, heterosexism, ableism, classism, and other systemic oppressions. I think I can speak for my peers that these oftentimes difficult but intentional discussions have built authentic relationships with one another and with the communities in, with, in which we serve and learn alongside. There's a strength in community a liberating love, and it's important that one, as one Ignatian family, we work to undo racism and harness our collective power to be intentional agents of change. Thank you.